By now we are already familiar with the importance of Gibbs free energy. We know how it helps us determine if a reaction is spontaneous or not. And not just that, it also gives us tips on how to manipulate the reaction conditions to make the reaction spontaneous. Now when the delta G for the reaction becomes zero, it indicates that the reaction is in a state of equilibrium. That is, the rate of the forward reaction and the rate of the reverse reaction become equal. And this Gibbs free energy change for a reaction can be related to the reaction quotient according to this particular formula. So as I said, when delta G becomes zero, the reaction is at a state of equilibrium, right? So Q transforms into equilibrium constant K. So as a result, this equation would transform into delta G naught is equal to minus RT ln K where G0 is basically the standard Gibbs free energy change for the reaction when all the reactants and the products are in their standard states. Now this is a very important thermodynamic relation that relates the standard Gibbs free energy change with the equilibrium constant of a reaction. Now we have already talked about this relationship in detail in another video. So in this video we are going to solve a very interesting question on the Gibbs free energy change and equilibrium constant. Okay. So let's now look at the question. The given reaction which is N2O3 decomposes to form NO2 and NO gases begins with 2 moles of N2O3 and at equilibrium the extent of the reaction is 0.5 moles. What is the standard Gibbs free energy change for the reaction at 298 kelvins if the total pressure at equilibrium is 2 bar? So to solve this question we have to go back to our equation which is delta G naught is equal to minus RT ln K that relates the standard Gibbs free energy with the equilibrium constant. Correct? So to calculate delta G naught we first need to figure out the K value. And in order to figure out the value of equilibrium constant, we need to figure out the amount or the number of moles of the reactants and products that are present at equilibrium. And for that we will use the ICE table, which is the initial concentration, change in concentration and the equilibrium concentration for the reactants and products here. So it is already given to us that the reaction begins with 2 moles of N2O3. So the initial concentration is simply 2 moles of N2O3 and the products are not formed yet. And the change in concentration is represented by the extent of the reaction. 0.5 moles of N2O3 has already reacted, giving 0.5 moles of NO2 and 0.5 moles of NO. Now finally at equilibrium you can see that the amount of the reactant that remains unreacted is 2 minus 0.5 moles which is 1.5 moles. And how much of NO2 and NO are formed at equilibrium? 0.5 moles each. Correct? So using the ICE table, we can figure out the amount of reactants and products that are present at equilibrium. And when you add them, you get the total number of moles at equilibrium, which is 2.5 moles. So let's just shorten this out. Okay, so let's just remove the initial and uh, change in concentrations and simply write the equilibrium concentrations. So that would be this. All right. As we are dealing with gases and the total pressure at equilibrium is already given to us which is 2 bar, we will be using Kp which is the equilibrium constant in terms of partial pressures rather than Kc which is in terms of concentrations. So Kp would be partial pressure of NO2 multiplied by the partial pressure of NO divided by partial pressure of N2O3. Using the partial pressures of these gases, we get the value of Kp, which can then be substituted in this equation to find out the final standard Gibbs free energy change. Correct? But how do we calculate partial pressures? We know that partial pressure of a gas is proportional to its mole fraction. So we can find out the partial pressure of each of these gases using this formula, which is the mole fraction of the particular gas multiplied by the total pressure. So using this we get the partial pressures as the following. Partial pressure of NO2 gas is nothing but the mole fraction of NO2 gas which is the number of moles of NO2 at equilibrium divided by the total number of moles at equilibrium. So that is 0.5 divided by 2.5 multiplied by 2 which is the total pressure at equilibrium. So this gives us 0.4 bar. And since the number of moles of NO is same as that of NO2, the calculation would give us the same partial pressure which is 0.4 bar and the partial pressure of N2O3 is 1.2 bar. So these are the partial pressures of the various gases at equilibrium. So all we need to do is simply substitute these partial pressures in this equation. Correct? 
and when we do that we get approximately 0.1333 now calculating the standard Gibbs free energy change seems like a piece of cake all we need to do is simply substitute the value of kp in this equation but before we do that I want you to hold on and look at something here you see the unit of kp based on this particular calculation comes out to be in terms of bar but we cannot substitute the value of kp as 0.1333 bar in this equation because you see the ln function requires a dimensionless quantity we cannot use a quantity with units in this function because that would not make much of a mathematical sense and would result in incorrect calculations so we have to ensure that the k that we use here should be dimensionless and to get a dimensionless kp what we do is divide each of these partial pressures by the standard pressure which is usually one bar or one atmosphere so that all the units cancel out and we end up getting a unitless number and then we can easily substitute this unitless or dimensionless number in this equation to get the final answer we do the same even with respect to equilibrium constant kc which is for concentration in which case we divide the given concentration by the standard concentration or standard state for solutions which is one molar so that we end up with the dimensionless kc now remember this is a standard practice that we use to avoid any kind of mathematical inconsistencies especially when we are dealing with logarithmic functions all right so now that it is sorted let's substitute this value of kp let's remember the unitless or dimensionless kp in this equation and see what result we get and when we do that we get the final value of delta g naught as approximately 4.992 kilojoules per mole so this is the standard Gibbs free energy change for the given reaction under the conditions that are mentioned here